New York's plan to seize Trump's buildings running into a major roadblock. Trump scoring a win after an appeals court slashed his staggering $450 million bond to $175 million in his civil fraud judgment. He now has 10 days to pay the lower amount in order to stop Attorney General Letitia James from seizing his assets. That all happening while Trump was in a different courtroom today. A judge ruling his hush money trial will start April 15th meaning Trump will be the first presidential candidate on trial while campaigning. Trump slamming the criminal cases against him as election interference. I respect the appellate division for substantially reducing that ridiculous amount of money that was put on by a corrupt judge. So he ought to be looked at and James ought to be looked at because she tried to get him. She's like the puppet master of the judge. We're going through this weaponization of our government to try and knock out somebody's political opponent. And so far, based on the polls, it's not working at all. That case is a scam, it's a sham, and it's a hoax. Democrats and the media, who were once thrilled about the prospect of Trump surrendering his assets, now fuming over the decreased bond. Honestly, this is so infuriating, I don't even know what to do. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. But certainly, this is one heck of a break for, yet again, Teflon Don. The playbook is different for former President Trump. He's pretty much gotten everything he's wanted. For what reason? No one else in the country would, would have that kind of luck. And my favorite, Bonnie Willis, is back after being forced to dismiss her ex-lover from Trump's election interference case. The prosecutor says it is full steam ahead, though, to go after Trump. I don't feel like we've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. For the record, I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Um, you know, I guess my greatest crime is I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. All right, Judge, uh, there's lots to shoot at yeah. here. Which, uh, take your pick, um, whichever okay. one you want. Thank you. Uh, the $175 million bond, uh, which certainly is appropriate because there was absolutely no connection between the $475 million and I think it's a half a billion at this point with the interest that Engeron just pulled out of the sky and said, I'm going to hit Donald Trump for that. And, you know, they're just disappointed because they wanted to call him broke Don. And he's not broke Don anymore. He's going to make that $175 million bond. Now, it is conditioned, of course, upon his perfection his appeal by September. That means he's got to have all his appellate work in the appellate division, first department, which rendered this decision reducing the bond. But I want to just, Dana, because I, I looked this up, uh, when Sam Bankman freed who uh, apparently uh, conned something like a uh, million dollars or a million victims, uh, his bond was $250 million. Bernie Madoff had 40,000 victims. His bond was $10 million. Donald Trump, no victims, half a billion dollars. I mean, I don't know where those people from the other stations are learning the law or what they're talking about. But look, there is no harm, no foul. That's the end of it. No one relied to their detriment on anything. No one lost a dime. Donald Trump is a whale client. Everybody who comes in with him makes money with him. That's number one. Number two, on the uh, business records case, it's going to start on April 15th. They've got the, um, a, a convicted felon who was a liar, who is the main witness in that case, on a case that is literally without basis because they took a federal uh, uh, felony charge mm -hmm. and they tried to breathe life into a, a uh, statute of limitation passed misdemeanor in New York that the DA Cy Vance uh, didn't want to go on and that Alvin Bragg didn't want to prosecute, that the Southern District wouldn't prosecute and that the FEC didn't prosecute. So the Democrats came in and they breathed hate into this, this falsifying a business record by bootstrapping a felony from the feds, pulling away the statute of limitations and the misdemeanor, pulling out Michael Cohen to be their central witness, and it's absurd. And the last thing I want to say is this. You had the Supreme Court came out and they said the Secretary of State in Maine, as well as the Supreme Court justice, I think it was in Colorado, were wrong. You can't take him off the ballot. They said to Fannie Willis, get rid of your lover. You can't have him on. And six of your counts go because you don't even know how to draft an indictment. And to Engeron, they're saying your bond is nowhere consistent with the facts and we're going to take it down, what, 40, 60 percent. So they're in bad shape already, and I think it's going to continue that way. This is all coming out of the Democrats who hate Donald Trump. Greg, how do you see all this? 
Very good question, Dana. I like my shirt, even though it looks rather strange on TV. I love that <laughs> montage. That there are people who are in, so infuriated they don't know what to do. That's what he said. I'm so infuriated I don't know what to do. Because Trump only is going to pony up $175 million. Right. So what kind of life do you lead? You know, do you have any friends or any family? What kind of lonely existence is this when you, you derive your happiness or sorrow based on the trials of another person? I can't imagine how small that world is. To see, when I saw that emotion, I go like, God, I don't even get that. I don't get that mad. I went to a crime sprees. I was angry, but I was angry because there was actual crime. But like over somebody else, it's like, it's so weird. The bond was based not on thoughtful, reasoned pol uh, penalties. It was based on what Trump was going to make, his profit. And it was reverse engineered using the manipulation of a law that wasn't used in that way before. That's why it was called unprecedent unprecedented. I still want to know who he writes the check out to, even for this bond. But if you hate Trump, you know, uh, you should still maintain a shred of principle and say, look, I don't want this guy in the White House, but I realize that this is like, illegal, immoral, and will have lasting consequences in the real estate industry and therefore ultimately the city. People like Democrats like Jamie Dimon are saying that. And yet, you know, you're not. I think the problem right now is you can't argue with an ignorant mob. Right. And the people cheering this on, those people you saw, have no idea what they're cheering. They have no idea. They don't like they don't when they see unprecedented in this seizure of private property, they go hooray, and they don't think, well, this is where people live and work. They don't know what this is gonna incentivize for the future. Republicans are gonna be able to do this. De more Democrats are gonna do this. The people who are in real estate are not gonna wanna invest in this city. But if you bring this stuff up, they'll look at you with a blank face because they're soaked to the gills with TDS. It's like, you know, it's like arguing with a mob, you know, torching an auto zone. Like they're in that moment destroying that building. And you go, you do realize people work right. there and it's not gonna help everybody living in that area and they don't care. They'll just trash it and they'll punch you in the face. That's the mentality. Jessica, why were they so mad about the rule of law being followed? I don't think that they would say that it was that the rule of law was being followed from the commentary that I've heard or, and observed on social media in the afternoon that they feel that this is about two tiers of justice and no other person but Donald Trump would have had the bond amount lowered that much. And I know that there have been larger bonds. It seems like 99.9% .9 of them have been to public companies and not to individually held companies. And that's really the point of distinction there. So isn't that but the two-tiered system of justice? That's, I'm saying what they were okay. arguing. I have consistently felt uncomfortable about this and also said that it was a distraction from the cases that people are really interested in seeing play out before they go and cast their votes in November or whenever their early voting period starts. It is definitely a win for Trump, and you saw that in his press conference afterwards where he said, you know, the, the beautiful appellate division, I'm happy to pay this. Um, I do still think that there was no point in him bragging beforehand about how he had the money. You know, he said he had $500 million a few days ago. Then before that, in his deposition, he had said that he had $400 million in cash. I guess we will never know. But I think he really gave up the game in one exchange with a reporter who said, are you worried a conviction could cost you the election? And his answer was, well, it could also make me more popular. Yeah, we, and go ahead. I... I I understand his thinking on that. And survey after survey reveals that oh, isn't the true. case. <laughs> no, he gains a popularity. He did that through the primary, and he is obviously running very competitively. But people don't want to vote for a convicted felon, and I think he needs to be careful about that. He still has a lot of cases pending against isn't him. Isn't that the whole point of this, though? Yep. Yes. Yeah. And then the also... It's so well, people, you don't, don't, it's so like people no, don't vote for you, a felon. It's a, it's a right, circular yeah. argument. Yeah. But if you... But that's making it out as if the man didn't do anything wrong. And well, the average no real estate yeah. the no average victim. real estate investor isn't inflating the worth of their you, you real estate. You don't know anything about real estate, that's that's Jessica. Come on. You rent. Look at that building right there. <laughs> Trump owns that building. Take a look at the entire Manhattan skyline. Did you skyline. actually just say Trump that? Trump owns <laughs> all of these beautiful properties. He's built these things. What has Joe Biden He's put built? His name Joe on a Biden bunch of has not have built anything, Jessica. Whoa. He hasn't even built a charging station. Okay. This man is responsible for thousands of Americans being hired and millions of dollars being made by banks, by investors in this great city.
The book in the back shot of that stupid former assistant U.S. attorney, you know what it said? Taking down Trump. That was the book in his little back shot <laughs> library. This guy is a straight player. These are not straight players. These are... These are hounds, Jessica. This is a savage attack on a man because these people are mentally ill. They don't want to see him actually convicted at all. They just want to see him convicted before the election. They don't care what happens after the election. That's the whole point of this. Joe Biden has unleashed the hounds, and Fannie's talking about the fanny train? Come on. If you take the Trump train and the fanny train and you go like this... My money's on the Trump train. Choo-choo, Fanny. Remember <laughs> after 9-11, Jessica? I do. How we treated Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? Your Democrat lawyers flew down to Gitmo to represent him. All they did was talk about, oh, they need constitutional rights. They need all of the rights that they should have, the right to appeal, the right to due process, the right to a trial. They're giving terrorists more respect than Donald Trump. They said, this is what makes America, America. Now... They're just destroying this man. They don't care about precedent. They're just trying to attack him any which way they can. Donald Trump has great, I mean, he thinks it's great representation. He is being given due process. He's gotten almost all of his requests from the Supreme Court down to the state courts. Okay. And what you just said, point? beyond the incredibly rude way that you began about the fact that I rent my apartment, yes, Jessica. Um, <laughs> is basically giving him carte blanche to do everything from storing classified documents and flouting subpoenas and not returning them to fomenting an insurrection after he lost an election she by millions funny. of votes. He's not charged with that, is he? What, well, I, but what I'm saying, what I'm, Jessica, what I'm saying is there's no victims in any of these cases, That's and you guys are very angry. These... No, none. And you guys are very angry that he has the cash. I'm not You're angry. angry. I just want him the to other pay. day you said, "Oh, he's broke. Oh, he doesn't have five hundred million dollar never, cash." I never and then he said just he put a bond for has... like ninety-seven million dollars for the woman who accused him. Accused and then he put him. another one hundred and seventy-five million dollars for this for stupid her. case. She didn't just accuse him; he was found liable. For You're mad he's rich. I'm not. I'm thrilled yeah. he's rich. Your next segment wealthy. is so fun. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.